can ask you first of all a statement yesterday from the club talking about US based investment and the fact that it looks as if that's moving ahead can you just get your thoughts on it no listen it's obviously a, a story that's been out there um, I think yesterday probably just indicates that it's maybe one stage further forward um, but I think certainly my understanding of the conversations that I have had and I've not been involved in a great deal of it um, which you'll you'll understand um, is that it is just a it is just a small step that's that's all it is um, my understanding again is that we we all these things that they can be a kind of longer process you know so that it doesn't necessarily change anything in my mindset and, and, and kind of in my remit. Um, you look at a budget over the summer, um, that's going to pretty much look exactly what it is just now until you know somebody tells me any different, which which certainly doesn't seem to be on the horizon or anything like that. So, um, yeah, what I think it is is a positive step because I'm always a believer in evolution if, if there's ways of improving things at football clubs. But, again, you'll see that, that Brian started here on Tuesday um, and then that, that, that then starts to become a conversation for the likes of Brian Caldwell and, and the board members and the Well Society of this football club to make sure that whatever happens next, for or against, then it's the right thing for the football club. I'll probably take a step back, continue to concentrate on football. Um, but again, just, just referencing back, it, it, it's one small step. I don't think anybody should be massively reading into it that there's going to be wholesale changes here at the football club in the coming days or weeks. Is that the thing from your side of things it's just business as usual and whenever there is a, a further update you'll you'll hear then yeah no the, the, listen the club have been good in terms of keeping me up to date I'm um, I, I love to think that I'm a pretty vigilant person I like to know everything that's going on um, as much as I possibly can but you understand also that there's only so many th aspects that I can control as well um, but what I do need to know is what the plan is moving forward and we do sit with a plan for the summer um, to my mind that the news yesterday doesn't change anything within that um, certainly not at this stage um, but again just indicating that these types of things can take a, a, a significant period of time if that's what's going to go through if that's what's going to happen because I don't, I don't really think that there's anything legal and binding there as such at this minute in time all it is is a sort of proposal proposal and one more step forward um, decisions still to be made um, and and as always I think that there's a lot of people here working at this football club for the greater good you know it's never ever a, a, a situation or a signal of uh, intent for, for, for making things worse or, 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 or trying to drag anything down it's always to try and see if we can evolve as, as I've already said there um, and we'll wait and see what happens I'll stay in contact with uh, everyone at the football club and, and, and as I think we've done I think we, we, we just continue to keep people updated as and when there's any more information to be heard. Ryan obviously stepping into his role this week, how have your early dealings been with him and is that looking like a sort of positive relationship that to you together going forward? Yeah, really good, uh, really good. Brian's a, Brian's a guy, and I said this last week, um, that's really well respected in Scottish football. Um, I always I always reference the fact that you've walked in the shoes, that you've actually done this job before, and for Brian it's been for a significant period of time, both in Scotland and in England. Um, I think Brian's the type of guy that could show you a list of achievements within that, um, which I think is so important I think in, the, in the modern day. So many people are fantastic at selling themselves on social media and telling you how good they are and what they can do and what their theory is. Um, but for me, I always go with the, um, with, the, with the overriding thought that somebody has actually achieved something, they can show you it, they can evidence it, and Brian's certainly done that. My early conversations with him have been really positive. He's a proactive guy. Um, he wants to try and have some sort of impact uh, at the football club. And I think you'll know that we chief executive sometimes, and even as a manager, there's sometimes there's easy ones, there's early ones in, in that role. Some, some aspects take longer, some aspects that you've got to work really, really hard towards um, trying to achieve your goals. Um, but I think fundamentally some of the first words that came out of Brian's mouth was that he's here to support and work with me. Um, he's here to become that glue that I spoke about from, from last week to bring every aspect of the football club together, which is massive. Because I do, um, if, if you look back in some of my words and my statements, um, back last February, what, what you have to do is join a football club up, whether it's the dressing room, the staff, um, you know, your kit man, your secretary, it doesn't matter, people behind the scenes, everybody must be moving in the one direction, everybody must be on that same bus um, and I think that that's obviously what Brian's looking to try and do but I know that I've got somebody there that will be uh, an excellent sounding board and somebody that's working towards uh, helping myself in the football department um, but the job's obviously much bigger than that and other aspects as well so nah, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with him moving forward. On the field uh, Stuart, slim chance of top six, you're playing the two teams above you, what's your thoughts, are you optimistic or 
Nah, you, well, listen, optimistic. If 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 I sort of um, if I sort of reference the, the just before January, just before the break, we've we've been in decent form. You know, we've competed with everyone that we've played against. Um, we've managed to pick up points. We'll all sit here in front of you and say that we think it could have been more, and we could have done slightly better, um, and we could have not conceded goals in certain aspects. We might have converted more chances, um, but I don't think many people gave us a chance of sitting in this spot um, for long enough in the season. I understand that as well because it was a it was a bad run we found ourselves on. But no, I think we've been competitive since the turn of the year um, I think it was a decent transfer window for us some of these guys have pitched in and really helped us I think we've been getting um, decent performances and returns from a number of the players but we're striving for better we're striving to um, go and try and see if we can maximise the opportunity in the next two games six points up for grabs um, I'm not shouting my mouth off I'm not saying that we're going to get top six but let's go and take ourselves a, a real positive mindset into these next two games starting on Saturday against Dundee um, and if you win one game of football the, the situation might still be mathematically possible going into one home game and that's all we can really control um, we do need a favour or two in there of course we do we do need one or two aspects to go our way um, but we just can only concentrate on this game on Saturday and it's going to be a tough one it's going to be a, it's going to be a real difficult game for us um, but I do think we're going in in a, a pretty positive mindset Are you more relaxed now that there's no danger or seems no danger from Nah, that's that. Did you know what? Again, I'm I'm speaking about mathematically possible about top six. You know, we can make that argument going the other way. So certainly not going to start saying that we find ourselves in a really comfortable position because. Um, again I'm, I believe I'm consistent saying that anytime you think you're comfortable and anytime you come off your levels and don't prepare properly for a game of football in this league it's going to come back and bite you um, there's no question about that so we have to make sure that, that, that we are getting our working week right we have to make sure that our preparation is spot on and we have to make sure our execution's slightly better than what it's been in the last couple of games, if I'm being brutally honest. Um, I was I was a little bit critical of our performance against Aberdeen, although I do believe we could have and should have taken something from it. Um, I believe we deserve to take something from the game against St Mirren. Uh, the weekend passed, but I still think we can execute what we do. So that's kind of been the plan this week, in all honesty. We'll always give the opposition respect. We'll always look at you know what Dundee are as a team and the qualities that they have. Um, but for me, my focus has probably been just shifted a little bit more towards what we want to be we, we have a definitive plan of how we want to play and how we want to look um, and I just think that we have to do that slightly better than what we have done in the last couple of games although we've been kept competitive although we probably could have and should have remained undefeated in those two games in my opinion um, I still think we've got a little bit more to come from us just well much and such the same um, Obviously, uh, Stephen O'Donnell, po possibly from the, the group last week, becomes a slight doubt um, in that he had to come off the pitch. Um, he's had a session with us this week, so um, we'll see how that, that pads out. But everything else, the longer-term injuries stick, um, but there's nothing fresh on top of what we already had. What kind of challenge are you expecting from Dundee this weekend? No, I think um, obviously the games we've had against them so far this season, getting into the third game, um, I think it's two draws we've had against them. So similar words to what it was last week against St Mirren. It's it's, it's teams that are of a similar level. You know, there's there's not a great deal between us. Um, we went there on the first day of the season, played at Dens Park. It was a close game. It was pretty competitive. Um, and then obviously we found ourselves behind in a game here and showed great character to get back in level terms. So um, it's going to be a tough game. Um, my pitch to the players becomes similar, as I say, to what it was last week, that um, with those teams, they're well organised, um, they're well structured, they've got good players in, in their team, same way that I think that we do. Um, and, it, and it's about execution. It's about those big moments in the game. And hopefully we get that little bit of luck, but hopefully we can execute what we want to do slightly better. And I think if we do that, we give ourselves a we give ourselves a chance but they've got obvious threats um, the two lads that are playing in the in the, uh, the advanced midfield positions for them are, are ones that have been spoken about and rightfully so they're having good seasons um, they've got a threat at the top end of the park both in physicality and pace um, and they do again it's another team that in this league that asks you serious questions with set plays long throws corner kicks free kicks they've got a pretty decent physical presence so all of these things are similar to what I say most weeks and we have to be braced for it and what do you make of the job Tony Dockery's done in his first full season the manager? Yeah, listen, Tony's done. Tony's done well. Of course, he has. That's that that, that that's been that's been well documented. Coming up, being promoted, um, and you know, I think they 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 find themselves in a position where they're obviously vying for that top six 
spot, which would have been a goal of theirs. So, yeah, they've done well. But, you know, I think I was one of the guys that went on record saying at the time, I wasn't too surprised to see the appointment. You know, Tony's someone that I've come across for a for a number of years. He's been a number two. He'd never been a manager. Um, but I think anybody that's kind of in the, uh, the confines of Scottish football will know that Tony Dockert is a, a, an astute guy and he knows the game and he knows how to set up and prepare a team. So I think when one or two eyebrows were raised, mine certainly weren't because, you know, sometimes just because you've not been a manager doesn't suggest, and I'm saying it with Brian Caldwell earlier on, you have to have walked in the shoes, you have to know what it's about, and you have to have uh, sort of lived that to be able to say that you know how to do it. So I think Tony's probably another guy that's that's evidence of that. Do you enjoy this side of the season, both as a manager and when you were a player, when all parts of the table are quite hard to predict outcomes? Yeah, uh, I, I did. I always sort of spoke about as a player, if I, if I probably just more concentrate on being a player in it, and I think that that's just sort of cascaded into being a, a coach and a manager. That, that this, this spell, and I think probably when it turns from March to April, now that all spells of the season are important, but this is the bit where, you know, games maybe feel a little bit better if you can get the three points. It has a significant effect on the league table. Um, you know, we had a, an excellent start to the season, and a lot of you guys were sitting there asking me, you know, how, how good does that feel in the position you're in? If I'm being honest with you, in football, it sort of means nothing at that stage. It's a good start and it puts you in a position where the league table looks OK after a small number of games. Um, but when you get to this stage of the season, it can have a real big impact and it can have a real big say on how good or bad your campaign's been, have you reached your goals. Um, but also like that aspect where we just get into this spell of now just playing games. The last couple of weeks there's been an international break. You know, There's been a, a Scottish Cup break within that as well. Um, I just think football players love that consistency, whether it's a game on a Saturday, a midweek game and then a, a game the following Saturday or whether you're just going Saturday to Saturday, um, just not break momentum. Um, I'm going to, people will hate me for saying that, I hate days off, I just like to go and uh, work away and just work towards what's coming and I think that's what this stage of the season brings for you as a team, you can really focus on the next game, you can really try and prepare to become better but to try and, to try and win a game of football so I've always loved it, as soon as it hits April it's always been a spell that that sort of brings a smile to my face being involved in football and you know I want that for the players as well I want the players to embrace it. Stuart, uh, some Mudwell fans have been a wee bit concerned there's quite a lot of players out of contract in the summer have you been able to start those conversations? Yeah I think you've been in in, in this room and uh, that question has been asked a number of times um, you know if you want to go specific players, we can do, but I think it's safe to say that in, in, in certain elements we've been preparing you know, way before January for what comes next season. You know I, I'm, I'm a planner and somebody that likes to do that. But I think we'll also see that there's been little bits of change and uncertainty at the football club which can have a massive impact in that as well. But in terms of trying to plan for the future, yeah, I've been doing nothing but that for um, a number of weeks, but months, and as I would say, even before, even before January, some of these conversations you try to have. Um, but as, as I always caveat that with, we, we, we need all parties to take part in that as well. You know, we need that buy-in from players, agents, myself, board level, um, we've now a new chief executive of the football club so there's a lot of moving parts in there um, but if you want to specify the football department we've, we've, we've kind of been all over that for, for quite some time Just heading back briefly to that chief executive situation how positive is everything like that coming together at this point? No, it's good, but we, we've, we've known for a while that there was going to be change. And As I say, Brian's obviously been the, 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 the person that's been selected to come in and do that role. I'm really pleased about it, even before sitting, sitting with Brian, as I have been fortunate enough to do in the last few days and spent a lot of time with him. Um, I was really positive about the appointment. I've been on record speaking about the work that Jim and Derek have done here at the football club, which has been terrific, and that, that goes again. It's worth saying again. Um, but no, I'm really positive about what comes next, working with the likes of Brian Caldwell, with his experiences, his ideas, um, he's proactive, you know, he's available to the manager, which I think is always really, really important. Um, and, and, and I look forward to the next spell towards the end of the season, but beyond that as well.